people looking at black, black brown people and seeing them as a spokesperson for their whole race and just gripping them, saying that they're all alike. People like to come up and ask us issues on race that they wouldn't ask white people. And I'm like, I'm not the person you need to be talking to this about. Go talk to someone else about it. And it's the people that go out of their way to come up to you and find out your opinion on these race issues. Not to learn anything new, but to just, because you're black and they want to know a black person's opinion on race issues. It's just the life. My name is Bradley Carr and I am a student studying a master's in civil engineering. So can you tell me where you're from? Like what's your cultural background? I am from Bangor, born and bred. Mum's from West Belfast Falls. And my dad is from London. His mum and dad are from Jamaica. So I want to jump back to kind of the start of like your journey growing up in Northern Ireland. Like what was your childhood experience like? It was good in terms of race. Like I didn't have many problems, but I was a Catholic running about with a lot of Protestants. But they were sort of taking me under wing, other wing as such. I didn't have many racist attacks per se, but it was obviously always the uh, microaggressions and the mascot type feeling. Are you connected to like your Jamaican side? Mm, not really Jamaican side. The only really Jamaican side I'd see is my aunties and my nana in London. Mm. But they all live in London now, so wouldn't really be a Jamaican side. So was your dad born in London? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it goes back generations then. So your dad grew up in London and then... His, my nana was part of the Windrush generation. Okay, so we're still in your high school and did you find that you had a lot of like good friends around you? Not good friends. I had like acquaintances and friends and, you know, childhood friends that aren't really going to be your friends when you're older. Until about third year, I was scared of everyone. I didn't pick a fight with anyone. Anyone that came up to me was, I was scared of them. But after that point, I just sort of looked at myself and was like, look at me, I'm bigger than all these people. I don't need to be scared. So I stopped really talking, taking stuff from people. Growing up in Bangor, like, I don't know, did you ever feel like you had a sense of belonging being fr like here and not having many other like black people around? It, was, it goes on and off. It goes on and off with different events and stuff like that throughout my life. But I've always, I, no matter what anyone says, I've always felt like I'm from Ireland, I'm, from, I'm Northern Irish. And do you feel like you were able to kind of have those conversations with your, your mum's white yeah. and your dad's black? And did they ever have any conversations around race? Or Because I'm sure they probably faced a lot. Yeah. I can't remember any like cliche talks you see in the movies and you see like a proper sit down and talk. I really can't. But, I don't know, it was sort of avoided by my mum because she doesn't have the vocabulary to deal with it. And my dad, he didn't need to say anything because he knew we knew. So it wasn't really talked about that much. So after high school, you're starting to like get more friends and when would you say that you really started coming into yourself as a person? Yeah, just coming out of high school and stuff, I started coming up Belfast more, hanging out with more like minorities, black and brown people. Started to uh, get involved with other cultures, like Jamaican cultures, African cultures, learning that they have so many different languages and stuff like that because we're not taught it in school. Yeah, I just started to grow into the person that I am, but I'm still growing. Yeah, so it's interesting because I think the reason why I wanted to have this kind of conversation because I want to know how black and brown people feel in Northern Ireland. Like obviously we both relate being mixed race yeah. and obviously like, I don't know, for me, I've always kind of struggled to feel like I belong here because I always am seen as like, people don't accept me from being like that I say that I'm Irish. Yeah. Um, and I've also struggled with my identity of being like, when someone asks me, where am I from? I'm like, I have no idea. I find like a lot of white Northern Irish people don't, really think about the experience of what it's like to be a black person or I think they do think about it but 
they don't have the capacity because they've never experienced it. Even when I'm talking about my life experience, I don't feel the need to bring up race because it's so constant in our life. So we just like sort of brush it off. But do you think you do that because you feel like people don't want to listen about it? I do do that, yes. I've had to delete some social media accounts because of that. People hear about it and they're like, oh, it's not so bad. I've just took it as the past year. It's not my job to teach people. It's your job to learn. I have done enough time trying to teach people online and it's affecting me more than it's affecting them. Well, I guess last year was really interesting with the Black Lives Matter stuff. How did, how did that make you feel? Like what, did, what was the scope like in Northern Ireland? I was very vocal about it up until a point. I was putting up on lots of posts and I had an old acquaintance pop up to me saying about, you're not oppressed, you don't have anything any worse, white people suffer just as much as you in Northern Ireland and stuff like that. Why do they need to come out of the woodwork and tell me this? What's, what's so damaging to them that they're getting so offended by me saying all this? There must be an underlying issue there. And do you feel like people in like generally in Northern Ireland like have the language for these kind of conversations or does it still feel like we're quite behind? In past experience, 99% of the time, no. Mm. Definitely not. But 99% of the time we don't have the good voc the best vocabulary to deal with it. And I wonder why it's because of our education system and just not being put through enough situations where we are forced to find the vocabulary to talk about it. And what stereotypes do you think people make about you based on what you look like? Doesn't have a Northern Irish accent. I find myself using extra Northern Irish lingo to like display that I'm from here. It's just how they see us, isn't it? And in the media and stuff like that, because where else are they going to see black people? I've been at a party and a guy's come up to me. We've been talking for a while. He's like, here everybody, this is my Black Lives Matter mascot. And it was just all these rough talks about race with white males and obviously the mascot thing. And that's, I guess that's just how I feel. People looking at black, black brown people and seeing them as a spokesperson for their whole race and just gripping them saying that they're all alike and just people like to come up and ask us issues on race that they wouldn't ask white people and i'm like i'm not the person you need to be talking to this about go talk to someone else about it and it's the people that go out of their way to come up to you and find out your opinion on these race issues. Not to learn anything new, but to just, because you're black and they want to know a black person's opinion on race issues. It's just the life. It's so exhausting. Have you dated any, like, have you always dated like Irish girls? Have you ever dated? Yeah, and what's those experiences been like? Do you feel like they understand you or what you kind of go through? Um. No one can really understand it unless they've gone through it. They can resonate with it, but they can't really understand what you've been going through. But all of them have tried. 99% have tried. Very hard, so can't fault them. And do you ever find when you're with like your partners and stuff, that people stare at you a lot or? They would stare at me more if I was with another brown person. Really? I think, I feel like that's what goes on in my head. And mm. um, when I was younger, I was, there was this mixed race girl. I was about 13, she had this big afro. And I was just too, too embarrassed to go with her because she was another brown person and people would look at me with this other brown person and go, oh, two brown people together. Just gives people another reason to look at me. When I was younger, 
I was I was insecure about it. No, I, I don't care as much. Very, 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 very little now. It's hard. Yeah. It is hard. And I, I think when you're that age, it's hard to kind of own who you are because you just want to be accepted yeah. and you want to be loved and you want to be part of a group. Yeah. And when you're made to feel that you're different, you just want to like escape that. Yeah. It would be different in London and such because there's a lot more black and brown people. But when you see like two brown people in an ice rink with loads of other white people, they stand out. Last question actually, what advice would you give to your younger self? My younger self? Don't care what people think because nothing matters. <laughs>